Hey guys, it's Coco Stern with Concept Hunter, and today we're going to prove that if you have a really good story, nothing else really matters. So, the game today is called No One Has to Die, just that, No One Has to Die, and what we have, what you can really easily see here, is that you get choices. So you start off with four people, and then you get different timelines according to what actually happens. People of choices. That's that's obvious. People of choices. It allows you to to decide something, decide the fate of your characters, decide the fate of the story, and not go down a linear path. So obviously, people of choices. Problem is that choices are not easy to make. Um, to just create a game with with such choices, for the simple reason that once you do that differentiation, then you have to go forward from there to diff completely different games. Um, in a way. And it's, it's just not that easy going there, so most games are pretty freaking linear. This game, however, since it's a small, short Flash game, um, you can actually have those choices, and they do it pretty well. What you actually have in this game is pretty much two things. Why did you... like this too? Two things. Um, one of them is reading short text messages, like you're talking in a Skype group or in uh, WhatsApp on your phone, like a group tech group chat with a lot of people so short messages that's the way they deliver the story and the second thing is actually short gameplay segments as far as criticism goes the short gameplay segments are really short kind of easy and um, and there's a couple of problems with how you move things and and understanding exactly what happens but it's fine um, it's it's just not amazing and it's really really short. The one thing that is really cool about that is that um, as you go through the levels and then you go back, it's the same level but differently. So the, in, in terms of the level design, it's pretty interesting and, and pretty cool. But uh, they could have done more. They could have done a lot more with taking the gameplay to another level, uh, trying to think up smarter puzzles, bigger puzzles, uh, something a little bit more because the majority of what you do here is read. This is a story. This is a story deliverance. There's hardly any gameplay here. And because the story is so good, it's fine, and I, I forgive the mistakes, because once the story is that good, nobody really cares. But they could have done more with the gameplay. As far as deliverance goes, and uh, the narrative, it's pretty cool. It's actually, I like it. I really like the idea of having short text messages, and just a line, or maybe a line or two to read at a time, really short things and you just press enter in order to move forward or next with the mouse to move forward and it's it's well made and it's it gets the story going and moving and along with musical cues sound cues that they bring out the, the different scores at the correct times they stop it for drama and they could move it put it in when it's in the correct time they do it really really well here and it, it draws you in and it progresses the story in a way that's uh, really cool and I really like it they also did something that we'll talk about in a minute uh, with actually how the, the player, which is me, how the player actually interacts with the different characters. So we'll see that in a second, that that's pretty, pretty, pretty damn good. And the last thing that I want to say before we actually go in, and um, we're actually just going to do the first level just to show you the bits because it's a story-based game and I don't want to spoil anything. Um, and it's really, really short, so you should play it. The way, what they have here is, you know, different timelines, as you can see. And whenever you deal with different timelines and multiple dimensions and all that shit, it can get iffy, it can get problematic. I really, really feel... I am always skeptical about these things, and they can always screw up, and I just feel bad about it in most cases. They did it pretty well, they have an, a, a pretty solid way, I don't feel horrible about it. And, um, and it's, it's really... It's, it's just fine, the story is cool. And uh, let's just go in and see how the first thing, how the first level drops out. I'm gonna try and make voices. I'm gonna fail horribly, so bear with me. End! Agent! The Phoenix Corporation Headquarters security has been compromised! All personnel evacuate immediately! Tempest engaged! Security room locked! Emergency services connect contacted! ETA 3 hours 17 minutes! Visitor has logged into the Phoenix Corporation Communications Network. I'm the visitor, so I'm just gonna, hello? Is anyone there? What the hell is going on here? Christina has logged into the Communications Network. There's a fire! Everybody 
everybody evacuate the building! That's my voice for a female. <laughs> Steve has logged in. Oh, it's you, Chris. That's pretty bad. I can smell the smoke from here. Steve, why are you still here? I thought you'd gone home! I was working back late. Why do you care? Troy has logged in the Phoenix Corporation through there. Lionel has logged in to the communications network. This is the CEO of the Phoenix Corporation telling everybody in the facility to evacuate the building. The security staff reporting immediately! Uh, the security staff are dead. I found them lying dead in the control room. Then I saw a warning on the screen about a fire, so I logged in. What happened to them? I killed them. And I lit the fire. That's Troy, by the way. Who the hell are you? Is this a joke? There's no time for this now. Visitor, if you're in the control room, then you'll have to coordinate us in escaping. You'll need one of the security codes. Security codes? The code is RFTS. What? Is this some kind of game to you? Security code confirmed. Security system is online. Begin scan floor B3. It worked. Now you may have a very difficult choice coming up, I'm afraid. Calculations complete. I, I screwed up. Fire on floor B3. One casualty unavoidable. Candidates Troy Steve. What does this mean? Our visitor is going to have to choose between keeping me or Steve alive. I trust this won't be our decision. Kill that asshole! I'm not dying for him! My job here is done. I'm ready to die. The fire is growing, visitor! You will have to lead through to be- You will be led through how the system works! Hurry up! Urgent! Please enter your security system orders immediately! The chat system has been locked until your decision is made! That's the one thing that I dislike. It's kind of- Why would it lock the chat system to put in- I don't really like it, but I'm fine with that. And this is actually the gameplay section, so water will come out from here when the switch is on. Water puts out fire, but also drowns people. Turn off the switch to stop it flowing. This is the switch. You can click switches when a person is standing next to them to turn them on and off. Click arrows to move people, which I just did. Fire cannot move through locked doors. Click a lock to lock it. You may only lock one. So I can only- I need to choose between them. I'm gonna save Steve, I guess, because Troy's a dick. And go one turn without the fire or water spreading to progress. So I click the switch, and I um, that's all, pretty much all I can do, and I'm going to move the next turn. Water moves first, then fire. And now I have to close the switch, or the water will drown Christina. The fire will kill Troy the next turn, and that's about it. And now I can move one more turn. The fire can't move anywhere, the water can't move anywhere, which means I finished, and yay! So that's it, I chose to, to save Chris and kill Troy, and uh, the fire has been contained, casualties Troy, I'm not gonna go any further, because I don't want to ruin the story, and this is, again, 100% story, pretty much. So, the, as you, as you saw, the, um, um, the gameplay is pretty weak, but it's not the main part, and it, it's over very, very quickly, now we're gonna get more messages, and it's basically a, a short story that you're reading. It's a really good story, and uh, personally, when a story, even if you know it's coming, even if you already understand the conclusion, but when it happens, you get that moment of, yes, you get that moment of, of damn, it is happening, yes, I'm happy, and it's, I know it's gonna happen, even if you know it's gonna happen, you get the, you get the goosebumps, and, and it's just like, I'm doing it now, um, in a way, and when you get that feeling, I hope you, you, I'm, I'm, managing to, to put up, put forward the feeling that I'm talking about. When that happens, then I forgive everything that bad that the game has done, and um, it's, it's succeeded in terms of story and narrative, and do that well. And this game is interesting. It's like a short story. It should not take you more than an hour, even if you suck at things, um, which is kind of hard because there's a very finite amount of things that you can do in the gameplay. So and maybe you read really slowly, I don't know, it shouldn't take more than 30 minutes tops, really, 30, 40, maybe an hour if you're a really slow reader. But this game is really lovely, it's called No One Has to Die, the music here is by F777, and again, the, the use of music and stopping at the correct times really helps the narrative, and the game has been, uh, has been developed, the author is Stu Stu the Blue, that's his name, S-T-U, S-T-U, the, and B-L-O-O, -O. I don't criticize other people's names because my name is so stupid. So, yes, 
Um, this has been <laughs> No One Has to Die. You should really just go play. It's 30 minutes. It's a great story. You'll enjoy it, I promise. And thanks a lot for sticking around with me. And I will see you next time. So long.